I'm Kirby Allison, and for years now, I've been exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. I've been invited on my very first game shoot up on an estate in Scotland, and I wanna make sure that I do it properly. The proper outfit, the proper guns, the proper etiquette. But in today's world, does all of this still exist? And if so, why? Eddie. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> so Kirby. nice to see you. What a pleasure ah. to see you. Welcome. Welcome. Mm. What a delight to have you here in London again. Well, it's so nice to be back. And uh, of course, it's a beautiful day here in London. We arranged so a it for reprieve you. Reprieve of the rain. And, um, you know, gosh, you know, I'm kind of excited. I'm here actually uh, about to embark on my first proper driven estate shoot up in Scotland. So pretty exciting trip for us. It's going to be a fun video to film. Oh, we yes. leave uh, this afternoon. And so I thought that, of course, one of my favorite rituals in London, of course, is coming to Davidoff of London. And this is a particularly special occasion heading up to Scotland. So I wanted to see if you'd help me kind of walk me through, of course, the incredible humidor and see what we might select uh, that would be appropriate for a driven shoot up in Scotland. It'll be my delight, Kirby. Please yeah. come through and we'll yeah. look at some choices. Yeah, thank you. So here we are, Kirby. Now, you mentioned the shoot, of course. Mm -hmm. um, there's really two steps uh, or two periods during a, a good shoot. Uh, one is, of course, the drives. Mm -hmm. And for that, my suggestion is always a cigar that is easy to manage. Not okay. too big, not too strong, uh, can stay lit, and uh, would still be interesting in between those drives. I'm yeah. going to give you a few choices and okay. we'll see what you think. Yeah, thank you. My first one, of course, is one of my favorite Dominicans, right here, the Fuente Hemingway short story. Yeah, familiar with this. This is a beautiful cigar. I love that. Perhaps a little bit short, but it will always hit the spot. Yeah. Light to medium flavor. Mm -hmm. So put this as number one choice for you. And that's a perfecto, right? It is. It's yeah. an unusual perfecto. Yeah. Yes, it's it's sort of quite compact and, and minuscule. Reminds yeah. me of the Cuabas that Max is oh, very that's fond right. of. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the unusual and the unpopular. That's it. <laughs> Uh, and then coming over here, the Upman brand from, from Cuba, and in particular this one, the, the Magnum 54. Mm, it's a beautiful cigar. Oh. So slightly larger ring gauge, right? Do you think something like this would stay lit more easily outside? Yes, that's a really good point. Um, keep the ash on the head. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not too windy, that'll work really well. And in between drives, it'll stay perfectly lit. Um, this will give you possibly 45 minutes. Okay. And Upman is, for me, a, a light approaching medium strength blend from, mm -hmm. from Cuba. So very appropriate, yeah. won't distract too much from, yeah. from the important work at hand. <laughs> it won't, uh, won't compromise your shoot too much. No. Aim. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a beautiful cigar, wow. Thank you. Uh, and then another one comes to my mind, which uh, of course is one of my father's uh, very, in, uh, very favorite walking cigars, uh, again Cuban, uh, and it's Trinidad just along here. And we do have some larger ring gauges in Trinidad. We're okay. quite spoiled there, but but I think for for the setting of a drive, maybe a Reyes, which is the same ring gauge as the Fundadores. It's a 40 ring gauge, really? okay. but quite a short piece. Mm -hmm. um, very easy to manage. You can grip it very comfortably in the teeth. Uh, it'll stay lit for a reasonable period of time. Yeah. Um, if you're a faster smoker, 
or a more accomplished shooter, perhaps. <laughs> the Coloniales could be the other option as well. A little bit thicker there. Yeah. Um, what ring gauge is this? If I'm not mistaken, it's a 44, but 44. it could be a 42. Uh, if anyone is out there, please correct me. <laughs> in the, in the, uh, That's a 40. 40. 40 right. ring gauge, yes. And the Fundadoras, which is a Lancero kind of length, is one of my favorite. Oh, That's a beautiful, a beautiful cigar. cigar. Yeah, right. Increasingly hard to find these days. You're right. Yeah. Uh, if you do come across any, let me know, because <laughs> I need some too. Okay. <laughs> Great. Yeah, well, this you know, is kind of hard to, hard to make choices hard to choose. in such a well-endowed or well-stocked humidor. Um, uh, and there's one more I would recommend, a um, little bit punchier, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the Winston Churchill from Davidoff. Really? Okay. And that's along here. So here we are, Kirby. This is the... Winston Churchill Petit Corona, wonderful size, a little bit punchier than the other ones we're talking about, but in this format, I think it'll still be a lovely interdrive cigar. Really? Okay. Um, what do you mean by punchier? Stronger? Yes. Okay. The, the blending is a little bit fuller bodied, not as much as the late hour, which mm -hmm. has that little kick of the, the whiskey aging. Yeah. Uh, but still, it'll remind you you're smoking a, a very good cigar. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I've got one more, which is a perennial favorite of mine, and, and I think you enjoy the size as okay. well. Uh, and that's just it. The Davidoff Short Perfecto. Oh, beautiful. You know, Davidoff nailed this format each and every time. They mm -hmm. did the Winston Churchill Perfecto Limited Edition, the Short Perfecto 702. They've done the Special 53. And this is in their standard line, a light blend, lighter than the Winston Churchill. It'll stay lit beautifully. Uh, and such an easy size to hold. It's a beautiful, elegant format. I mean, the Perfectos are just, <laughs> I mean, Davidoff does such an exceptional job with these cigars. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy to yeah. hear that. Well, it's really kind of hard to, I guess, even choose. I mean, this is the challenge whenever one is in the humidor with you. you I mean, <laughs> at first, the, um, the Fuente, Fuente. You know, short story. I mean, that is, uh, you know, it's funny, I have fond memories of that cigar. Uh, the first time I was in Vegas, you know, I enjoyed that cigar over dinner. It was one of the first times I ever had the privilege of smoking while eating, and it was kind of the perfect little compliment to dinner. It was a, a trio of duck. I still remember that. Uh, but then the Magnum 54, you know, again, just in terms of the larger ring gauge and the draw, it seems very um, appealing. Uh, and then, you know, we got to the Trinidads. And then the second one that you showed me being slightly longer, you know, I, I certainly am at fault for sometimes smoking quite quickly. And so, you know, having something maybe that's a little bit longer than the rest of the shooting party might give me a little bit of additional runway so that I don't uh, smoke through my cigar prematurely. <laughs> um, Wonderful. So that's, so that's for the shoot. Um, what about for afterwards, though? Mm. Because I really do hope that after the shoot, the plan is, is for us to kind of all get together, enjoy a nice meal, and hopefully after dinner, which is probably one of my favorite times to enjoy a cigar, that we can all sit down and, and have a proper smoke and uh, kind of, uh, uh, I guess, regale in the success of the day. That's a very good question. And, and my favorite time of day to enjoy a cigar. Um, really, I'm looking at Davidoff on this one. At the moment, they're delivering some beautiful, rich, large format cigars, very suitable for that, for that moment. Um, I'll draw your attention to the Dominicana. Okay. This is the Toro. It's the 2014, mm -hmm. meaning the tobacco is entirely from 2014 production. It's a Dominican Pura, so entirely Dominican tobaccos inside. The blending is medium to full bodied. In my opinion, one of the richest, most beautifully evolving cigars they've produced in, in, in recent, really? recent times. And it's standard line, meaning mm -hmm. it's available. You don't have to yeah. worry about it running out anytime yeah. soon. Uh, so this would be one choice. A nice larger format, right? I mean, ring gauge, right? Yes. So this is probably pushing 50, 52. Uh, this one is a, if I'm not mistaken, a 56. Really? Um, yeah. Again, I stand to be corrected if yeah. I'm wrong on that. <laughs> and we're on record, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> and, and also, the internet will let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly. <laughs> I would also like to say in Kirby time, this is probably a 45 minute and one hour smoke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, perhaps for the slower smoker, an hour to hour and a quarter. Okay. Something of that order. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully it won't keep you up too late. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I've got another one. Um, it's the beauty of shooting a shooting bird is it's <laughs> not as uncivilized as a deer, you know, where you have to wake up at 4 a.m. <laughs> very, very good point. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorites, and uh, I may have spoken previously to you about this. Uh, it's the Nicaraguan box press really? toro. Really? Okay. Uh, quite an unusual shape, especially mm -hmm. for Davidoff. Uh, you find this in, in Padron, you find yeah. this in a few of the other brands. Davidoff did in the Nicaraguan line. Mm. And the way they produce the box press toro is they slightly underfill a round cigar and it's placed in a mold okay. to give it that wonderful symmetrical rectangular shape. Um, what comes out shouldn't really be different to a regular round mm. toro Nicaragua, but it is. Mm. Really? Um, on the smoke, on the flavor profile, um, the way it evolves. I have countless Cuban only smokers who try this cigar and come back and buy a box. Really? Um, so I yeah. think it, it overlaps with some of the, the Cuban flavor profiles. Yeah. But it's, of course, its own unique cigar. Yeah. Its own beauty. Uh, what about the draw? Is the draw different on a box press than a normal a very good, cigar? Very good question. Um, when, when Davidoff executed, the draw is identical. Um, I mean, truthfully, there's, there's almost no difference between this and the round. Uh, I think if, um, if you find probably accidentally a box pressed Cuban cigar, mm -hmm. you would notice a difference on the draw. Okay. Um, because tr to, to truly make a box press, you do need to underfill slightly. So you mm -hmm. would imagine an easier draw. Mm -hmm. You never get that experience with, with the Davidoff. Yeah. Um, and one other very cool feature, which I love about the box pressed, of course, is without an ashtray, it will not roll over in high winds. <laughs> very important consideration. Uh, yeah, that's brilliant. Wow, that's quite, again, how does one choose here at Davidoff of London. Yeah. <laughs> it's the challenge. Beautiful cigar. Uh, and I've never tried this. Um, wow. Hey, well, anything maybe a touch larger? I know that, you know, of course, when I think of the evening time, oftentimes it's, I think of double Coronas, Lusitanias, oh, yes. and the larger format kind of, uh, you know, glory cigars. Uh, anything you'd recommend again? For sure, yes. Um, almost slipped my mind. We have a Churchill size from Davidoff, it's a limited edition, really full-bodied, wonderful, wonderful presentation, if I may. It's right here, and it's the chef's edition. Yeah, I've heard so much about this cigar. Uh, I was given a box uh, by a good friend for Christmas, and I've oh. yet to open them up, letting them kind of rest a little bit in the humidor. So tell me about this. How is this smoking right now? Well, it's gorgeous. Um, for me, it's one of the richest, strongest blends Davidoff have produced. Really? Okay. And it was with a panel of chefs. Mm -hmm. uh, they made, I believe, 12,000 boxes. And they're a work of art, by the way, the boxes. But what matters is a cigar. And it develops, uh, for sure, four, five different steps, not even yeah. three. Uh, starts off with a lot of pepper. Mm -hmm. About an inch in, again, it changes, as Davidoff often do. Um, but becomes very gamey. Yeah. So this could be quite a nice companion if you're eating game uh, yeah. when you're enjoying that uh, and develops into a truly powerhouse cigar. The last third, uh, make sure you're very well grounded. Yeah. Well, I love how a larger format cigar really kind of evolves over time. Yes. Right? Yes. You really get to experience that evolution. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, and should that not be long enough, uh, I've got one of my favorite favorites of all time, and okay. I know you're a big fan of the Double Corona. Yes. Uh, it's the Ramon Alones Gigantes. And oh, wow. here we are. Look at this beauty. That is gorgeous. I know you're familiar with the Ramon Alones mm -hmm. blend. It's a, it's a boutique brand from, from Cuba. It's a perennial favorite of the UK market. Uh, there have been several regional editions done to celebrate that brand, and indeed a limited edition. It's one of the very few from Cuba that has the distinction of being made in limited edition releases as well as regional edition releases. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gigantes is a classic prominente size, which is the double Corona, 49 ring gauge, I believe approximately seven and a half inches, perhaps eight inches. Again, the internet will correct us. <laughs> God bless the internet. Um, Gosh, hard to choose, hard to choose. But uh, you know, maybe we've kind of put together a selection of a few of these, and uh, you know, again, I'll certainly be arriving uh, in good in good form with Wonderful. cigars from Davidoff of London. So, Eddie, thank you so much. It's a great you know, your pleasure. guidance in this humidor, of course, is uh, second to none. Thank and uh, what a privilege again to have you help me, you know, choose some cigars for this special occasion. 
Thank you so much, Kirby. The honor is entirely mine. I only wish I could join you. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Daddy. <laughs> Kirby. <laughs> thank you so much. Pleasure. Uh, the pleasure is always mine. Oh, thank and, uh, you. And you've got me well set up for the shoot. My only regret is you won't be joining us and I won't be smoking these in your company, but um, I'll certainly be thinking of you. Thank you so <laughs> much. Enjoy. Yeah, thank you, Eddie. Pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, so there we go. Davidoff of London, there is certainly no greater place in all of London, if not the world, to grab some cigars. Always a pleasure to see my good friend Eddie uh, and to be able to walk through his humidor kind of under his guidance is one of my greatest pleasures of this city. I think we're all set, so let's head off to the airport and go to Scotland. <laughs>